Can we do history here? Sure we can. Let's, uh, let's talk history. Let's have a little history lesson. Think back. When the whole wild and woolly Bill Clinton Bubba era was over, what I remembered was Schmucko. Whitewater and Paula Jones? Yeah, sure. But they were really just blips on the screen. Weren't they? The screen is politics, and when you hear the alarm go off for money or sex, you may not like it, but it's not exactly news, is it? We've been down that road. We're all adults here. We know what goes on. Politics, money, sex. Even Hollywood is yawning. Next! So you can toss out the influence peddling, the sweetheart deals, the sweethearts, and Al Gore's phone calls, and the contributions from the Buddhist monks, and the allegations of presidential relations, other than foreign or domestic, because that's all filed away under money and sex, and we've been there, done that, bought the t-shirt, got the bobblehead. What I'm left with, after I toss out all the other stuff, is Schmucko. That's the name, along with The Creep, that Monica Lewinsky used to refer to Mr. Clinton. It's unseemly, it's undignified, and it's disrespectful, even if it was just any young person referring to any older one. Hey, schmucko! But when it's a young intern talking about the President of the United States, whoa, it seems to me that we've turned a whole nother corner. President schmucko. I recall back in the days of Watergate, said the old-timer as he lit his pipe and rocked back in his chair while the youngsters gathered around him, glanced at each other, and wondered if it would be too rude to bolt. Richard Nixon used to insist that the real issue was not about him, Richard Nixon. It was about the presidency. We had to be careful because whatever we did to him would have implications for future office holders. But people at that time were in no mood for abstractions, and a lot of folks, and a lot, and for a lot of folks, and a lot of reasons, it was a lot of fun to kick Richard Nixon, especially when he was down. Sidelight, when he was defeated for governor of California, he said, well, I guess you won't have Richard Nixon to kick around anymore. And I think this made an impression on people, both in the media and ordinarily voters. It hit like electroshock. Hey, he's right. And I do miss that. And eventually, Nixon staged a remarkable comeback. Why? Because down the road, people wanted, they needed, to have him around for some serious kicking. Well, the old-timer said, relighting his pipe, and looking around with fiendish delight at the mournful faces of his captive audience, it was about him, Richard Nixon. And it was also about the office of the presidency. Citizens lost a lot of respect for that office, whatever little they may have had left in their tanks after Kennedy got shot and LBJ said no mas. We knew politicians lied, see politics, money, and sex, but here we had caught one in a whopper. I am not a crook. Even worse, for the sake of the office, we had all those tapes. The guy was kicking himself! which revealed Nixon to be many terrible things, some we'd known, some we'd guessed, some we'd feared. He was a hypocrite of the first water, he was mean, petty, vindictive, he was paranoid, jealous, and a bigot. He was a person you would not want to call your friend, much less your leader. He was very nearly possessed of a kind of insanity. He was, in a sense, a monster, and we had created him. Yep, come on, from checkers to China, we helped make Tricky Dick. He was our monster. So appalled by this, we destroyed him, we tore him apart, but the office of president went on. It passed to Gerald Ford. I remember him, this pipe is almost out, as the guy Chevy Chase built his career on by making huge pratfalls. Sick transit gloria, as they say. The presidency had become the nation's biggest kick-me sign, a running joke, and eventually it passed to Bill Clinton, which brings us back to Schmucko. Bill Clinton had Camelot dreams. He was William Jefferson Clinton. But he was also Schmucko, his evil twin. Hillary knew all about Schmucko. It was her job, partly, besides drafting major national health care policy, to keep Schmucko in line. She had a better chance of getting major national health care reform passed. Can you picture Schmucko? He's an imp, irrepressible, naughty, mischievous, a scamp, but lovable. Schmucko was charming. 
Schmucko loves to have a good time. The best time is being bad. Belushi would have made a great Schmucko. Schmucko craves excitement. He can't keep his hands off the forbidden fruit. Bill Clinton felt our pain. Schmucko felt us up. Bill Clinton, dutiful, serious, the compressed lip, the firm jaw, is all about politics and money. Schmucko, the hard-on, the boner, is willing to settle for his third of the pie, which is sex. And the neat thing about that is that Schmucko doesn't ever have to pay the tab. He can pin his escapades on Clinton. He's got the greatest hiding place in the world, inside the President of the United States, which leads to the birth of Slick Willie. And this gets even better because think about it. When Bill Clinton says he didn't do it, he's telling the truth. It was that awful schmucko. Oh, you schmucko, Hillary must have thought. Many, many times before Monica Lewinsky ever called him that. What have you done now? Schmucko. It sounds like one of the Marx Brothers. Groucho, Chico, Harpo, Zeppo, and Schmucko. Perfect. Or one of the Three Stooges. Yeah, the fourth or fifth Stooge. Mo, Larry, Curly, Shemp, and Schmucko. Or he's a clown that you hire for your kid's birthday party, but he's not the president. What happened to the respect? I guess she was just being honest. I mean, even if it is the president, if it looks like Schmucko and acts like Schmucko, then he's Schmucko, not even Mr. Schmucko. What, what I heard a lot of people saying, most with resignation, but some with almost a fierce joy, is that we get the leader we deserve that Bill Clinton truly represented the condition of the country, a symptom, not a cause. And if that is true, then duplicity is the order of the day. President Two-Face leads the way. We've all got our doppelgangers. We can all play Jekyll and Hyde. We go about our business in our masks and designer suits and ties and thousand dollar shoes, and when we're done and it's time to play, we all turn into schmucko. I'm not surprised, but I had hoped for something a little more inspiring. Maybe along the lines of our better angels type thing. But I guess that's the Disney influence. So when I'm in my nursing home, pipes gone out, it's not long now, and they turn on the TVs to keep me occupied, and some historical program comes on featuring those bygone days of the Clinton era, and they start getting into all the funkiness, the money and the sex, I think the light will go on in the basement of my brain, a very dim bulb, and I'll say, schmucko. I don't expect the nurses will know what I'm talking about. If I'm lucky, they'll increase my medication.